How's it going everybody? Taylor from FTR back with another vlog. Today I'm going to show you guys how to set up a leopard gecko tank. I thought it was a great time to do so because yet again my wife brought home another gecko. So I'm going to bring you guys along the ride with me while I set up the tank, kind of show you what I like to do step by step and then um, with some information to go along with it that you should know when you're setting up your leopard gecko for the first time. With that being said, we'll get right into that in a minute. But first, I have a huge announcement that we're going to be doing in our next video next weekend. So make sure you check into that. It's a, something I've been holding back for a long time and I'm very, very excited. It's kind of going to set up full tilt reptiles for the next few years to come. And I'm really excited to share it with you guys. So make sure you check that video next week. Um, with that being said, hit the like, smash the subscribe button, hit the share to all your friends, and we're going to get right into it. So the first thing that you're going to need, obviously, is your enclosure. So today we're going to be using a ZooMed tank. Anyone that follows us knows that I'm a huge ZooMed fan. So we're going to be starting off with our ZooMed tank. We also have our ZooMed basking setup up here. So it's a dual light fixture. So what we have is I have an infrared bulb on the one side and I have a UVB bulb on the other side. Leopard geckos are a desert dwelling animal, so they like to stay a little bit warmer. So at nighttime, we can have a drop of anywhere to 70 to 75 degrees. Um, that kind of is the, the typical range you want. Now each collection is going to vary a little bit of degrees. So if you kind of stay in that 70 to 75 degree range during the nighttime, then you're going to be good. During the day, you want to get it up between 85 and 88 degrees. That kind of is a good basking temperature for them but you don't want the whole tank to be at that temperature. You want it a little bit of diversity in the tank. That way you can, the animal, if they want to keep on the warmer side, they can. If they want to cool down a bit, they can. So what we have going here is on the basking side, I have it sitting around 87 degrees. Um, and during the day, I have the other side of the tank that's sitting around 75 to 78 and then it's dropping down a little bit at nighttime, and that's kind of just the natural way we have this room set up in the facility. So the next thing that you're gonna need is you're gonna need some substrate. I have this gecko on paper towel right now, and that is just because one, it is still a baby, it's a little bit easier to kind of watch what they're doing with their stools and making sure that the gecko is still growing properly and still having proper stools and going to the bathroom the way it should. The only reason I use paper towel in the beginning is for those reasons, just to keep a better eye on it. As the animals get older, I will be switching to substrate in the future and I can do another video of what substrates I would recommend for leopard geckos. But for the time being, I'm just throwing paper towel on it so I can get a better, closer look on it on a day-to-day -day basis for the next few weeks. So I already have my paper towel um, ripped apart to the proper sizes that I need. So I'm using four squares for this tank. And I'm doing a double layer just so that it has a little bit of extra cushion in there and I can clean it a little bit better that way. The next thing you're going to need obviously is water bowl. So geckos will get a lot of their um, hydration from the animals that they eat, like the crickets and the other bugs that they eat. But it, I still recommend having a water supply in there just in case they want to take an extra couple of licks of a drink once in a while. You're not going to see them going to it. Uh, regularly as something like a dog or a cat, but they will still use it if you give it to them. So I do recommend having a water bowl. We'll put some water in that after. The next thing I'm going to put in is a piece of cork bark. Now they are ground dwellers, so they're not going to be using it to climb on very frequently, but you, at the odd time you will see them climbing on something like this. So I like to have it one for the aesthetic value of it, but at the same time so that they can get in there and they can climb on it if they really do feel the need to. So I'm just going to set that in here. It is a very basic setup because they still have the paper towel in there. So we're just kind of going to get a whole bunch of spots to hide if it needs to, as well as some other things to climb on and to move around. And if it get, does get scared, then it has some other areas that in the tank that it can go to. So what I'm doing is I'm putting two different hides in. One is a rock hide and it will gather a little bit more heat for them. So I'm going to put this closer to the basking side and then it will absorb the heat from the infrared light on that side. And then I'm also gonna put a little bit of a coconut hide on it on the other end, so that if it wants to go in there and hide on the cooler end, it can do so as well. And then 
because my kids love dinosaurs, we're gonna put a little bit of a prehistoric look to it and we're gonna put a saber-toothed tiger skull in there just as an extra little place to hide. And my wife picked this out, so we're gonna put a little Buddha in there for some good luck. So that is kind of how I set up the tank, just as a beginner, because the animal's coming into the collection. It's got its UVB, it's got its heat, it's got its hides. It's gonna have its water supply, and then... So before we get the gecko into the tank, I thought I'd give you guys a closer look up of what we're actually putting in the tank today. So this is our Tremper albino leopard gecko. I'm not for sure on the sex of it. Um, as of right now, it's still a juvenile, so I don't have an intention of probing it. I'm just gonna kind of let it grow and we're gonna find out what it is in the future. And in the future, if we tend on having a breeding pair, then I can get the appropriate mate to go with it. We used to breed leopard geckos here a long time ago. Um, we got out of it because at the time I just didn't have the space and the ball pythons were taking off and I didn't have the appropriate room to keep everything. But with the new facility, we do have some extra room that we can get a couple different lizard and gecko colonies going. And I'm really excited to have the room to be able to do that because I do think leopard geckos are an awesome pet. And there's so many morphs and everything coming out nowadays that it's, it's very exciting to be able to get back into it at this time. But this is our Tremper albino leopard gecko. And I'm very excited to have this guy in the collection right now. The kids absolutely love him. Or her, I guess I should say. So the next step is to go ahead and put the gecko into the cage. And we're going to give him a little bit of food in there. So I have some crickets here for him. And we're going to feed him the crickets and I'll show you guys to see if he uh, wants to take any for us right now. So let's go. I like to throw about 10 crickets in there at a time. Um, they're not going to bug them if there's too many in there because there's lots of spots for them to hide. So we'll go ahead and see if he's going to eat any of those up. And thank you guys for checking out the video and we'll catch you guys next time. Be sure to check the video next week for our big reveal and have a great week guys.